Okay, so <clears throat> here we have our open source BMS system, courtesy of the Battery Vehicles Society in Britain. And uh, I've been essentially building this up over the past couple of weeks. And here we see the um, master board. And this talks to these uh, slave boards here. Let's see this one set up. These um, eight cells here. See the other board hasn't been completed yet. And I have a third board hanging about somewhere here. There'll be for a total of 48 cells. And um, give a little bit of a close up on this. I can get this camera to work. Each, um, each cell block uh, comprises of a PIC 12 series microcontroller, optos, uh, transistors, a few other parts. It's quite a neat design. This is the little uh, master board here. See the LEDs flashing away, telling us we have comms. And we have the display on this little um, composite video screen. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn on the... Uh, I've just got a power supply hooked up here to, to uh, put some charge into these cells. This is the first test to see how the uh, shunting function is going to work. Now these cells here are um, quite poor quality. They're 8 amp hour uh, 38120 cells. Supplied by a company called E-City Power in China. And uh, as such, it would be quite interesting to see how the system um, copes with this. I'm going to have to do some extensive testing on this before I put it in the car. But <coughs> it has been designed quite well. And it hasn't got a lot of the inherent flaws that BMS systems have, such as trying to control the charger totally. This doesn't do that. And the charger can at all times control itself. Um, that if this uh, system were to go completely dead or to go crazy, it can't command the charger to continue charging. All it can do is it can tell the charger to stop charging or to just continue on to its normal CV point. Now it's got a lot of, of other features built into it as well. So will go through it a later stage. See, we're charging. You just got a. I've only got a one amp uh, power, power supply here that's capable of uh, going to 24 volts to charge these cells. As you can see, we have a cell hitting 3.62 volts there now. I'm not sure where the cut in points for the shunts are. As far as I know. Ah, there we go. There's our first shunt cutting in. And uh, I'm going to have to throttle that charger back because that's one thing that would normally be happening. So they would be uh, throttling back the charger. And we have a alarm. We've gone above the max on that cell. It's quite interesting. Okay. So let's throttle back our charger a bit. A little bit too far, I think. You can see our shunt is just still on there now. Seems to be starting to pull that cell back down. You can see it's starting to happen. It's quite interesting. So I guess you need to set a current limit below the shunting current on my charger. So if I set to around 250 milliamps, which is where I'm at, 
and try and go back up a bit and current. Air up a little more than that. Oh, they up to around 200 milliamps. There we go. You should see that cell starting to go back up again. So far the shunt hasn't come back on. Well, I'm boring everyone to death here again, so I'll come back when we have some more cells hitting the set point. We'll see how we fare out. Actually looks quite interesting in the dark here. See on our um, main board and the comms LEDs we have the bright one in the center is the charger cutback so that would be commanding the charger to throttle back to a balancing current I would guess. Over on this <coughs> slave board you see the single LED there for the cell one shunt. If I look at our display here, my camera decides to work. See that we have the, the highest cell is 3.66 and the lowest cell is 3.36. Now, I'm going to try and go into the menu system here if I can find a little controller, which is quite a great little thing, it's a little joystick. If I go into submenu 2, cell voltages, so I can scroll down, you see cell 1, the 3.66, if that's coming out too well there, to yeah, I can scroll down to all the cell voltages, all 8 cells, and we're back again to our main display. There's quite a lot of features in this little thing. So, we you know we're talking away happily. We're on constant cutback on our charger now. That shunting LED is on permanent. Oh, that's got it again. You can see I've just throttled my power supply back to uh, just under 250 milliamps here. Should be just below the shunting current. So that'll be something that I'd have to set, to set up on the uh, pack charger. So more licking and we'll come back. We get some more cells happening. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of the charging cycle now, as you can see. Got a lot more LEDs coming on here as the cells are approaching the uh, balance point. Flicking on and off. Our comms uh, are still going on there. And we will hopefully be able to see. They're approaching. Uh, our final charging voltage, which in this case would be 28.8 volts, would we'll give an average of uh, 3.6 volts per cell. We'll display the cell voltages. I think quite a few of them are hitting the trip point. Give my temperature sensors uh, coded in and functioning fairly soon. So, uh, now it's not a bad first test. See, we have lots of LEDs flashing around here. So, all in all, pretty good first test. Okay, we're just back again with our little 
BMS system here and um, as you can see here hopefully uh, if camera will focus I've got these two uh, Dallas semiconductor um, I squared C temperature sensors just installed on the control board here just for testing and um, I have gotten the serial codes out of them and gotten the software compiled uh, so the system is now displaying the temperatures you can see the TEM there plus 18 point or sorry plus 19.8 degrees so they're quite accurate within 0.1 degree and if I just uh, pinch one of them here see its temperature going up Let's take my fingers off see it coming back down again so those guys are my two uh, temperature sensors there's a couple of extra features to this setup here that I hadn't uh, copped on to and I've been going through the software today and uh, so I'm just going to explain some of these uh, um, features here so the first one is obviously we have our pack voltage here which in this case we only have eight cells for testing <coughs> the second um, piece of data here is telling us the cell that has the highest voltage which in this case is uh, cell number one so 3.36 tells us the cell that has the lowest it's kind of jumping between two cells there now it's between cell six and cell three or 3.32 um, volts in our two temperature sensors as I said earlier and down here we have amps and K now what this is is that the amps uh, basically are battery amps and I'm in the process of setting up this um, Lem Haas 300 300s here uh, I just got it hooked in to our uh, control board here and I'm um, in the process of calibrating that so that will display current in and current out of the battery pack and the K here is the actual kilowatts and uh, when you're driving this will display the uh, power in kilowatts that's been delivered to the motor controller so that's a very impressive and very helpful feature to have um, down from that we have SOC which is state of charge I've just been playing with the, with the current sensor so it's, uh, it's at 97.1 down under that there uh, we have MPH which is, which is vehicle speed and we have a little input here I think somewhere the sun is shining here yeah, here it is speed sensor so I'll be integrating the VSS to that have to calibrate it that will pick up the vehicle speed and with that piece of data then we can calculate the hot hours per mile that are being uh, consumed um, Odo here is old is the old uh, odometer I think so that's how far we have travelled in miles REM uh, I'm not sure about I'm gonna have to go back to the code and check that out um, trip is trip is trip counter so it's whatever journey that you just took and charge here just basically tells us whether we're in a zero or a one, i.e. whether a charger is turned on or off. So um, that's our display here, which we got a lot of 
very pertinent data here and the great thing about this uh, this little cheap display it's very easy to see from practically any um, angle or distance which is a very helpful feature and of course it's cheap and the uh, final little thing just to go through here now is a little this is the little joystick controller here it's quite a simple piece of kit it's a little PCB a little four position stick and a couple of passives on there so that controls the menu system you can just go up uh, down left right and you can click the center just push it down to actually click the uh, click the center position so that's a little update on our current um, proceedings see you all soon